What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Cap 4, we finally got a trailer. Brian, I was upset, Brian. I was hoping it would, it would just be a rumor, but they showed it to us, Brian. Isaiah Bradley going nuts. I'm tired of them taking our leaders. I know you are, too. I mean, like, how do you... Honestly, Brian, how do you redeem him? He got a memorial. Then you got Freddie talking about this is Winter Soldier 2. He's he's excited for it. And I'm like, man, you're one of those that gets got. <laughs> Mouse again is working on him. I hope Freddie listening to this too. In fairness to Freddie, that is 100% the point of the trailer. Yes. The, yes, the trailer absolutely. is 100% going for a Winter Soldier vibe. Soldier look. Yes, 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 yes. And then, Brian, they show us... Well, before we get to oh, what they showed us at the end, Brian, what did you think of uh, Harrison Ford's portrayal of Thunderbol Thunderbolt Ross? And what, how they set this story to be in, in terms of uh, Sam Wilson, Captain America, becoming... Yet to prove himself yet again to be Cap, Cap the Captain America for um, 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 that 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 role as, as Cap. What, do you, what did you think of that uh, interaction, and ultimately what this movie you think will be? Because this movie has been cut up all over the place, and we're gonna see remnants of what this movie will be. So, what what, what are your thoughts on? Uh, look, all my fears about Harrison Ford were realized in this trailer. Um, listen, I, you know, Harrison Ford is a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't have to, <laughs> nobody can ever question that man's filmography and the characters mm -hmm. he's brought to life. Mm -hmm. But now in his 80s, I think he's having fun just being Harrison Ford. And if I was him, that's what I would do too. But for Thunderbolt Ross, that's not really what I want. R.I.P. William Hurt. Um, it is really just Harrison Ford being Harrison Ford. Again, with his gruff voice, <laughs> making a few wry smiles. Mm -hmm. His little, like, I don't know how to describe it, but this thing that he does when he gets kind of cheeky with another actor and, like, it's the same <laughs> old stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so if you like that, then you'll probably like his Thunderbolt Ross. If you envision Thunderbolt Ross as having more nuance, as I do, then I think you're going to be frustrated. Mm -hmm. And there's a big name actor, not really. You know, we just talked about Denzel being Denzel in Ancient Rome. And this is kind of mm. like Harrison Ford being Harrison Ford in the MCU. And it, it, there is some parallel there, I think. Um, so I didn't like that. Mackie. I thought it was fine in the trailer. You know what, actually, ironically, my one concern is, is part of what makes Mackie magnetic and charismatic is his dry sense of humor and his quick mm -hmm, wit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they really stripped that. He's really earnest and serious in this trailer mm -hmm. to almost to the point of when Ross says, you're not Steve Rogers. I kind of was like, yeah, but he's kind of, at least in the trailer, he's kind of talking and acting like him. Mm -hmm. So I kind of hope they don't take all of Mackie's flair because that's part of what makes him different. And it's part of what made him fun as Falcon. Mm -hmm. um, they've, they've improved the suit. I will give them that. I mean, it looks better. It looks more cap. It makes more Cap esque than the white whatever we got at the end of Falcon mm -hmm. Winter Soldier, and I liked it deployed as Falcon at the end. I did like that shot, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. I thought was mm -hmm. a, a cool way to stamp him as like, yeah, I'm not Steve Rogers, and this is what I can do. We learn nothing about his chemistry with Danny Ramirez, the new Falcon. We learn nothing about his chemistry with sort of other characters. We, you know, we heard at one point there was a love interest. Is there still one? I don't know. His chemistry with Sabra, I have no idea. Like. There's a lot of unanswered questions because we really only see him talking to Ross and then you see Ramirez talking to him, but you don't really see them interact. So a lot of TBD. And remember, that was one of the rumored problems with this first cut was that he had no, no one was having chemistry with him. Yeah. So I think that's unresolved at best. There was some talk, Brian, of a polling of whether or not Anthony Mackie's character 
should get the super soldier serum, Brian. And I think, and my thought or my response to that as to why they're sort of asking or, or that question, opposing it, is because of all the physical stuff that he, his character needs to do in this suit or whatever, right? And can, you know, he's, at the end of the day, he's just a regular human. Yep. Right? Your thoughts on that, Brian? Uh, I is, don't, yeah. is is he with what he has at his disposal? Is he able to be or to do the again? Perhaps not fair to compare, but to do the things that Cap can do when it comes to fighting foes. No, I think it'd be a huge mistake to give him the serum because then you all you then you all really he is is Steve Rogers just looks different like, yeah. to me. What I would say as a counter to that is, a, is if it's well written and well choreographed, you shouldn't have to ask that question. Because did anyone mm. at any point in Scarlett Johansson's run as Black Widow say she needed a super soldier serum? No. Did she do really cool stuff in action in spite of her humanity and limitations? Because yeah. it's written in a way where you're like, if you're just really that badass as a spy and an assassin, you might be able to pull that off. But they never asked her to hold a helicopter from the side of a building, right? No. See, that's what I mean. It's like, if they ask Mackie to do impossible things that only a superhuman would require could pull off, then we're going to kind of look fish-eyed at the screen and be like, whose idea was that's, this, right? That's what we're but afraid of. Here. if you're in you know, a well-written fight scene where he has to overcome that deficiency with other tools and his smarts and other things, hey... That's what we want, I think, to but, differentiate this version of Cap from the prior. Absolutely. But what I'm afraid of is that will be sacrificed or that detail will be sacrificed, Brian, because of all the other stuff that they've been trying to put together with this movie. Well, that goes to my point of there's too many characters in this movie. And even with the ones they cut, at least some of the ones that are left, including one that they decide, decided inexplicably to spoil in this teaser may not make any sense for Cap to fight. Because we talked about it many times. Part of the reason why Winter Soldier is so brilliant is the stakes are perfect. And the odds and the opposition are proper. And that's <clears throat> Cap with the serum, right? He's, he's believably fighting a bunch of well-trained but human soldiers in the elevator yeah. with limited tools. He's not yeah. fighting Thanos one-on-one -on -one in the <laughs> elevator. Right? Notice when he fought Thanos one on one and did okay and then got his ass kicked, he needed the hammer to do that. Yeah, yeah. So this is the point of like, it has to make some sense. And that's what I hope to see, Brian. Not like, yeah, he couldn't be able to do that without, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just don't want to see that sort of uh, display of uh, powers or abilities. Yeah, and Steve got, if it doesn't make Cap sense. got Winter Soldier. Cap gets shot. He gets his face busted to a pulp by Winter Soldier. He's beat up in yeah. the course of that movie, even with the serum. So yes. I'd be pretty disappointed if Anthony Mackie's kind of walking around with no scratches <laughs> in this film. He should be, you know, he should be like he should you be like what? Rocky in round 13 <laughs> in this movie. So this is a little this is a part of trailers that we sort of ask ourselves, like, why? Like, we know we're going to see it, but why show us something, right? And and not even that, sh just showing us something. It not even looking impressive, right? You could have put anybody in that joint. You could have put the Hulk himself, Green Hulk, and it wouldn't have mattered, right? You didn't show us anything... I don't know, Brian. It, it makes no sense on many levels. So first of all, let's step back. You and I are well aware of the Thunderbolt Ross Red Hulk connection. We know that Red Hulk is in from the toy leaks, all sort of stuff. But think about the everyday moviegoer who goes to the movies like twice a year, who isn't a comic book fan and sees that, who doesn't have that knowledge, who sees that clip of Red Hulk at the end, doesn't know that it's Ross, doesn't have it and, and just stares at it and is like, that looks like the Hulk except red. 
It has no. Oh. It has no impact other than confusion. Yeah. That's my point. But uh, it put, it could spark curiosity, which is what I think they're hoping for, Brian, and and perhaps also. I, I mean, uh, those fans out there, they're getting the comic book fans. The comic book fans are gonna go see it. But that's my point. They're gonna go regardless. So why give away? The visual exactly why give it away it, to me it is desperation it's right you're letting all the tricks out of the bag um because you're afraid people won't see the movie but it's like it didn't to me add anything or put the impact in the trailer that i think they thought it did although part of me part of me did wonder what i thought i was like hmm is the mcu trolling pablo at this point are they going to ruin every colored version of the hulk for you <laughs> Gray Hulk, all kinds of all, all of them. I don't want to see a movie with the Gray Hulk. Like, I don't want to see nothing, you know. No. You know, so they, they, they perhaps have the capacity to perhaps do that one, one day and just be done with it because done with it because there will be no onward, forward thinking about what's next for that sort of character or that sort of scenario. Yeah. Um, we can also talk about what we didn't see. We did not see the leader. I think we heard the leader, but I don't think we saw it's him. It's like we, we it's just, either Brian. It looks ridiculous, and they don't want to show it, Brian. That's that's all I can think about. Maybe it's unfinished. We don't. It could be unfinished. Maybe the effects are not done yet. I don't know. But they were talking about doing practical effects. What do you mean it's not finished? <laughs> it's all practical, Pablo. Yeah, that Red Hulk was really there. Um, we also saw a lot of Giancarlo Esposito. And I yeah. didn't quite get it because I was like, everyone is fixated on who he's playing. He's out there saying no one's guessed it. They show him as this like super cool assassin like soldier. And I'm like, do we care? Like, no, no offense, but like, I mean, Giancarlo Esposito is, is a very talented actor. He's done a lot, of, done a lot of good stuff. But he's not, he's not Harrison. Or, I mean, he's not Tom Cruise. It's like, I it's feel like they're almost that, showcasing right. him like he's that level of performer. And I, I just, all due respect, I, I don't think he's there. A lot of people like him as an actor. He won over a lot of people in his portrayal of Gus Fring in Breaking sure. Bad. And he's done other things that people enjoy him in. But for the most part, he's usually playing the same dude. And he's usually like the fourth or fifth bill guy. He's usually not, you know, he's a really good character supporting actor. He's not really like someone who's built Kevin franchise. Going Hollywood. This is Kevin going Hollywood. Trying yeah. to put in some names in there to get people in the seats that he, uh, But I I, I'm just saying, I don't think there's people out there who see Giancarlo Esposito in a Marvel trailer and say, that's the difference between me seeing the movie and not seeing yeah. the movie. Right, where yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we had this discussion. I, to be clear, I think it's like a one percent chance it happens. But if they announce Tom Cruise as Hal Jordan, there will be people who watch that show who would not have cared otherwise because yeah. Tom Cruise is a Green Lantern, right? Like, and again, yeah. I don't think it happens, but I'm just saying the level of star <laughs> required to make people care about a project. I just don't think Esposito's at that level. Fine actor, but doesn't have that global appeal i i could see the vibe the trailer was going for i don't think it did anything to really like calm my concerns or take away the things we've heard about which by the way the movie's being chopped that's the other thing the movie's being reshot right now so i would love to see an over under from people on how many shots in the trailer are actually in the act in the final cut mm -hmm. it might be lower than you think you know and by the way i i did have to bring this up because i brought this up on a prior show and we got our answer. Uh, so Sabra, supporting character in this movie, who you see briefly in the trailer at one point, as I said, in the comics, is an Israeli spy mm -hmm. trained by the Mossad. Disney has erased her heritage and backstory. And I did bring this up as a question. Would they, uh, would they put an Israeli character on screen and own the comic heritage? And the answer is no. Is no. So there will be people who have a feeling about that. Just one of those things where if you're looking to grind, you know, pick that bone with Disney, <laughs> you will circle that and say, yeah, I figured you guys might do that. Yeah. By the way, 
<laughs> while we're on it, it won't be its own show, but I wonder if that's one of the topics in the Disney Slack that is now apparently public domain. Ooh. Keep an eye on that, folks. Because when this Let's happened to Sony, that, when this yeah. happened to Sony, Amy Pascal lost her job and a lot of things changed. Wow. Disney It'll... slacks about projects with everything that's been circling this company for the last couple of years could be very interesting. Interesting. Let's see what happens, Brian. This is very, very interesting, Brian. If that stuff starts to come out and you get some level of detail and conversation and, and oh man, this is right. Like we just had that, like, think about like, what if there's slacks all around the Victoria Alonso situation as one example or blade or blade. <laughs> there's a lot here, people that could be very damaging depending on how it was talked about internally. Oh my God. That'll be interesting, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Cap 4 trailer. Your thoughts on the reveal of the Red Hulk and why you think... Obviously, they're desperate, I think. that is, They just want to show you this is an Aquaman move. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Should they have waited? I mean, they didn't, they didn't show us the leader. I didn't even miss, miss the leader. I don't even know if the leader is still going to be in the movie. <laughs> Well, he's used to getting cut. <laughs> you know, if he gets cut again, I would be like, yo, just... I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!